early morning start. down to the crag and try not to die. It is a bit slippery, but crampons help. Probably filming this is a terrible idea. Yeah, I'm putting the camera away for this. See you down there. Deep gone. One of the most famous ice climbing places in Norway. Fucking awesome. Waterfalls, as far as you can see. Check it out. Let's go climbing. We are getting the roof ready. See, there's these cracks between the roof wood slats, wood plates, wood slats, wood sheets, wood, I don't know, what would you call those? It's a lot better to clean and deal with and not have uh, mold and build up when you don't have cracks everywhere. So we are filling them. Wow which is slightly annoying. Is that the stuff? So after I filled in the cracks between the wood slates and the ceiling, I was ready to then install the power. I wanted to install the power before I painted, that way I could paint over the power cords and make it look a lot nicer. Using the breaker that we installed in episode four, which uh, link above, there are two heating elements on the B150. Each has their own plug, and therefore I gave individual outlet to each of the heating elements. In addition to that, I also put accessory outlets for plugs relating to heating the fermenter, cooling, any other spare electricity that I need around the brewery in general. You'll also see here that there's a little bit of extra length at the bottom of each plug. And the reason for this is that way, once I do a few brews, I can actually have some flexibility on where I put these plugs in their final position. And then we can shorten up the wiring from there. Once the outlets were installed, I was ready to then move on to the actual wall, smoothing, sanding, and painting. As you can see here, the walls came with a very rough finish, which made them quite a pain in the ass to clean. So what I did is I wanted to smooth them out and sand them. I achieved this by using a bathroom or a waterproof spackle in order to smooth out the texture and allow me to sand over it as well. This turned out really, really well, and I'm very happy with it, and it made the wall much smoother. Once the walls were smooth and ready to paint, I painted both the walls and the ceilings with one coat of primer and three coats of paint. This paint was also bathroom and waterproof paint designed to be sprayed for cleaning of the brewery. So now I'm uh, in the process of preparing the floor for epoxy. It's uh, a messy job. So basically I am grinding with this handy dandy thing. Wow. Down the concrete floor. 
and it's um, it's messy. So this is the side that looks good, and then this is a uh, mess and keeping too much gobbledygook from going in to the drain, and so I'm putting it in the bucket. But it's uh, definitely a process back to it. One thing I'm learning that really helps is uh, spraying down the floors, prevent a lot of dust. Mm, dust management, baby. Mm. Not sure if you could see it, but the old floor versus the new floor is a pretty big change in smoothness. Pretty happy about how it's coming out, and now it's just gonna cut a channel down the middle of this. Part of this handheld movement. Going from here to here. With the idea being if something spills in this side, then I'll be able to squeegee it on down into the channel and not have to squeegee it all the way into this drain right here. So I guess now we do some sawing. All right, let's do it. So we have the channel marked and ready. And I'm using this concrete channel saw. So it actually has two blades to allow for more cuts and easier breaking of the concrete. It's also meant for cutting channels for plumbing and etc. and then extracting the dust. I have no idea how this is gonna go. No idea. It's also a funny story. The reason I have this saw is it turns out it's more expensive to rent a concrete saw for a day than it is to buy a brand new one. We'll see if that's uh, if that turns out well or maybe the this saw is not high quality and it's gonna screw me in the end. There's only one way to find out. I guess let's just do it. Successful channeling, making sure that I am cutting close together so that way when I'm chiseling out that I don't have these big deep breaks. And it's going okay. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy. I need to remember to look at the camera. I'm always like looking around, not at the camera. I need to get better at that. See, I'm doing it now. God damn it. I just like, maybe I'm insecure and I avoid eye contact like a lost puppy or sad puppy or a lost sad puppy. Oh. All right, chisel, chisel. All right, now time for the final part of the floor, which is the epoxy. So I have now sanded the floor. Um, there's some little bits of paint that were kind of in lower areas, but that's fine and made my drain, made the sanitary corners, and then made sure the floor was quite clean and dry. So the first step is applying a primer coat, which is just diluted epoxy. The second step is applying the first coat of epoxy. Um, the third step is applying the final coat of epoxy, which I'll also put aluminum oxide as an anti-slip agent to hopefully make the floor not so slippery and die falling in a pool of hops. Although it's not a bad way to go. But um, as you can see, I've oh, marked up the f here, marked up the sides, and that's where the epoxy is going to go up the side and uh, hopefully look nice. But uh, yeah, let's start mixing the shit and get it done. Oh yeah, and the best part of having doing epoxy is having nail shoes. I've always wanted to wear nail shoes, and now my dream has come true. So that's a plus. All right, let's let's say goodbye to the ugly floor. Bye, ugly floor.
You were uh, ugly. Wow, it's, it's hardcore glove shot. Watch, watch a man struggle putting gloves on. Have you been uh, good? No. <laughs> Maybe it'll work. And that brings us to where we are today. You can see the floor came out pretty good and the sanitary corner. Wow. Also, um, lights and stuff are up and ready. And now the last thing that I have left, which we'll save for another video, is fixing up the plumbing uh, and also installing a new sink, which came recently. So there's some painting left to do because it was behind where the old water heater was. You could see that I have a rail system in place for transporting the grain. And that's about it. So plan to give a brewery tour once I'm all finished and everything's sorted. So make sure to click right here in order to see that. Otherwise, I think that does it for today. And uh, see you around. You are